Well, to my church family and whoever's watching, my name's Matt, and I want to welcome you and tell you how glad we are to have this time with you. Uh, before we get started in worship, I want to remind you of a couple of things. One is that we want to know how we can be praying for you. You can go on our website uh, and you can tell us, share with us a prayer request, email us that way. Um, you can also let us know even as you're watching on social media, our pastoral staff is online as well and uh, they can see the comments if you want to share a prayer request with us or send us a message that way. We want to continue to be a church family that's praying for one another. I also want to remind you that we can continue to give together towards the purposes of God. And so you can give your tithes and offerings online on our website or on the CA app. Uh, either way, there's also a link below this video uh, where you can give as well. I want to let you know that we are going to take a second offering after we sing for our kingdom update that we do once a month, and so we'll share with you some of how we're continuing to uh, serve God's kingdom around the world. Uh, before we worship, let's pray together. Would you pray with me? Well, Lord, I thank you that you are a good God. You are a great God. You are almighty God. Above and beyond this world, you are over this virus and this crisis that we are living through, you're bigger than all of that. And God, you are also very near to each one of us. And so, Lord, we welcome you now in our homes. We welcome you in our hearts. And we want to worship you, God. Help us to do that. Help us to offer all that we are to you in this time. We love you. And in Jesus' name, we say together, amen. Let's worship now. I'm so glad you're here with us. Let's worship our God together. Let's sing. Here we go. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will our God. Our God, you reign forever. Our hope, our strong deep.
grateful today that our God is an everlasting God, especially in this season where it can be so easy to be filled with worry, anxiety, and fear. And sometimes that can feel overwhelming. But what we're doing right now as we worship is we're declaring the truth because the truth is what will defeat the fear in our lives. And so I want us to read this scripture out loud together. So wherever you are in your room, I want you to stand with me. And we're going to declare the truth of our God according to the scriptures. So let's read this together. Reading, I love you, Lord. You are my strength. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my savior. My God is my rock in whom I find protection. He is my shield, the power that saves me, and my place of safety. I called on the Lord who is worthy of praise, and he saved me from my enemies. And we say, amen, amen. Let's sing like this. He is my rock, my shield, my fortress. He's my salvation and my strength. The cords of death, they were surrounding me, but he heard my is my refuge, my high tower. He's my deliverer, so strong. The snares of death, they were confronting me, but he heard my cry for him. So I'll stand today. So I'll stand and trust, I'll stand in faith, I will not be shaken. So I'll stand and trust, I'll stand. that verse again he is and he is my rock my shield my fortress yes he's my salvation and my strength the cords of death they were so His hands, and 
I'm carried by His grace He's a lifter of my head He reminds me that I'm safe If He carries the world He can carry me One more time Oh, I'm carried by His I'm carried by His grace He's a lifter of my head He reminds me that I'm safe If He carries the world He can carry me Let's sing this hymn together I'm pardoned for sin and a peace that endureth thine own dear presence to cheer and to guide strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow Ten thousand be. Let's sing. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. And all. a bridge goes like this you'll never leave you're always here though I can't see you're ever near forever be so close to me my Lord my King oh let's sing it together you'll never leave You'll never leave, you're always here. Though I can't see, you're ever near. Forever be so close to me, my Lord, my King. One last time, you'll never leave. Watch a short video from one of our kingdom partners. Well, when I think of Vietnam, I think of a trip that I went there. I drove uh, 600 kilometers through three provinces. And there was absolutely no church. It is a difficult area to work. It is restricted environment uh, for the gospel. 
So I would call for prayers that, you know, remember Vietnam, remember that even though it's on the map, uh, it's still a pretty much unreached country. 98% of the people don't know the gospel, have not heard the gospel. That means close to 90 million have not heard the good news. Without freedom, you need more creativity so that uh, you can do the work of God. Uh, but with 90 million people, we have a long way to go. It has been proven that when they have a chance to hear the Word of God, they will come to faith. But the call for all is to join with us in prayer, in support, stepping up with the Great Commission response to help us to reach the people where they have no other chance to know of Christ until we deliver the Word of God to them. It has been our privilege for the last several years as a local church to support an effort in Vietnam that gets the gospel to over half a million people in that nation. They receive it uh, by audio and by video, uh, and they are sermons that are translated from Christian Assembly, as well as some of the music that has come out of this church translated for the Vietnam people. That effort is supported by what we give together to the kingdom offering, and once a month we take a moment to give together to that offering, and we want to do that today. Uh, so we invite you now to uh, visit our website, to go on our app, and let's give, believing that God will use all that we give to expand the reach of the gospel in a place like Vietnam and others. God bless you as we give together. Well, hey, welcome everybody. It is great to be with you. And of course, if you're a visitor or guest, my name is Tom Hughes and one of the co-lead pastors of Christian Assembly Church. And of course, to my CA family, great to be with you as well. I want you to know how grateful I am for you. And I've been praying for you every day um, in the mornings as well as in the evenings, multiple times throughout the day as well. So I'm so grateful for you, and I'm glad that you've chosen to be with us as we continue our series called Running with the Giants. Well, it was a drizzly afternoon in early 2015 when a group of 35 people gathered together in Washington, D.C.'s newest group. They called themselves the Quitters Club. And, and they had an interesting tagline. Their tagline was, let's give up on our dreams together. So this kind of hodgepodge of strangers was drawn together by the same invite that read this. They said, most of us have something special that we'd like to do with our lives, but at the Quitters Club, we can help each one of us stomp out the brush fires set in our hearts and get on with our lives whenever things aren't working out so well. Well, one by one, the people in the group, they shared about kind of their God-given dreams dream of what they had hoped to do with their life and why they wanted to quit on it, why they wanted to give up on it and give in. And they, one by one, chronicled all the different obstacles that they were facing. But surprisingly, each time that somebody shared this, others in the group would kind of spontaneously encourage them to persevere and to not give up. In fact, one person said it this way. They said, here we are at the Quitters Club, and we are all sitting around encouraging one another to keep going. There's something about perseverance that I believe God has put inside of each one of us God's word says it this way in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. It says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easy, easily trips us up, and let us run, and here's the phrase, with perseverance, the race that God has set before us running with the giants, what we're doing is we're seeing how God's faith and their stories can build our faith now. And as we read from Hebrews, the race that God has set before us is one that requires both faith as well as perseverance. 
But how exactly do we get perseverance whenever times are tough? Well, today, what we're going to do is I'm going to pull a giant of the faith out of the cheering section, a guy named uh, Gideon, and we're going to hear what God has to say to us through his story about perseverance in challenging times. So let's consider that, but before we do, let's pray. So God, we thank you that you are the God who never changes, that you are the God of all goodness, that you are the God of fresh strength, and that you are the God of perseverance and even the God of peace in challenging times. So as we come to you now, as we come to your word, would you meet with us? Would you silence all distractions and help us lean in to hear what you want to say to us through Gideon's story and how that will help us in our story to persevere and find peace even now. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, when we first meet Gideon in the Bible, uh, things aren't going that well for the community. In fact, Gideon, when we first meet him, is threshing uh, grain in a wine press. Now, normally, threshing grain is something that you would do outdoors because the breeze would allow uh, the, the, to carry away kind of the chaff. But he's kind of indoors, kind of covered up a little bit because of the enemies, the Midianites. And they were, I would say, experiencing their own kind of safer at home mandate because of these Midianites that keep coming through and oppressing them. In fact, we're told this in Judges chapter 6 verse 1 and on, it says this, it says, the Israelites did evil in the Lord's sight. So the Lord handed them over to the Midianites for seven years. The Midianites were so cruel that the Israelites made hiding places for themselves in the mountains, in the caves, in the strongholds. In fact, the Midianites were so oppressive that they go on to basically destroy much of the economy of the Israelites. And the Israelites who had previously kind of turned their back on God, they'd begun to worship other false gods. They now, because of the desperation, they turn back to God and they cry out to God and help. You know, crisis has a way of revealing to us that none of our false gods will ever actually be able to save us. When everything that we've put our hope in gets shaken, it only serves to highlight the one true God of the Bible, the unshakable God of the Bible. Well, God is merciful, and so he responds to their repentance and their prayers by appearing to Gideon. We pick up the story in verse 12 of Judges 6. It says this, The angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, saying to him, Mighty hero, mighty warrior, the Lord is with you. Sir, Gideon replied, if the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? And where are all the miracles that our ancestors told us about? Didn't they say the Lord brought us up out of Egypt? But now the Lord has abandoned us and handed us over to the Midianites. Then the Lord turned to him and said, Go with the strength you have and rescue Israel from the Midianites. I am sending you. Well, what I want to do is I just want to pull out three lessons that I believe Gideon would want to tell us or encourage us with about how to persevere in our own crisis and our own race of faith. The first thing I think Gideon would say is this, is that God's race for you is run by God's strength for you. God tells Gideon, go with the strength you have, I am sending you. It's kind of a strange thing, I would say, to to say that to someone who's fearfully hiding in a wine press. In what way is Gideon already been given strength that he has? Well, here's how, because Gideon had just got done reciting all of the ancient stories of how God had rescued the previous generations in their great time of need. You see, when you know God's history with his people, the more that you know God's history with his people, the more that you will have strength to trust God's future for you. Why is that? Because God doesn't change. The same God who delivered the Israelites from the Egyptians now is coming to meet Gideon to deliver the Israelites from the Midianites. And it's the same God who comes to meet you and I today. Well, some of you, you might be thinking, well, yeah, but Tom, that was back then. That was in Gideon's time. That was then. This is now. But literally right in the story, that's the same thing that Gideon thought too. Here's our problem. 
whenever we're told to go in the strength that we have, we immediately are tempted to focus on all the obstacles and weaknesses that we have rather than God's presence that he's going to go with us as he sends us. Gideon does the same thing. He focuses in on his weakness. He says in verse 15, but Lord, how can I rescue Israel? My clan is the weakest of the whole tribe of Manasseh, and I am the least in my entire family. Let's have a little kind of true confession time. How many of us, and I know I'm including myself here, have said this week, God, I can't do this. I can't handle the fear. I can't handle watching the market tank. I can't handle losing more hours at work. I can't handle another client saying that they're not going to be able to pay this week. I can't handle being cooped up inside alone. I can't handle being cooped up inside with my family. God, I can't. And God says, yes, you can. Do it with the strength I've already given you. A couple weeks ago, I was told a true story from a pastor that I know. And he was hanging out a pool at a, at a resort, I think it was. And he was challenged by a guy that he didn't know. And the guy said to him, I bet you can't jump in the pool, go underwater, and hold your breath for a minute. Well, the pastor thought that was kind of a, a weird thing, but he was up for the challenge. And so he took on the challenge and, and he goes under and he has his kind of stopwatch on and he makes it to a minute and he comes bursting out of the water and, and kind of tells the guy, see, ha, ha, I, I, I proved you wrong. But now the guy said something different. He said, well, now actually, I'm not going to bet that you can't do it. I'm going to bet that you can hold your breath, not for one minute, but for two if you will let me coach you. Well, it turns out this guy that had challenged him was a little bit of an expert on this. And so he gave him several tips. He told him, before you go underwater, take several deep breaths before you go under. I'm going to coach you through the whole thing. So listen for my voice. When you want to exhale, only exhale a little bit at a time because that'll trick your brain a little bit. And when you feel like you can't do it anymore, just focus on a leaf that's floating in the pool because that will distract you. And so this guy goes under the water and tries to make it for two minutes. And guess what? He made it for two minutes and 30 seconds. Some of you, you have been hearing messages of faith for years. You're just like Gideon. He knew all the stories. And your capacity for faith and the strength that God has already given you is much greater than you might think it is. Just like my friend who went under the water and didn't really believe that he could make it for two minutes and ended up exceeding that. Some of you, God has already put a reservoir of faith in you by the stories you've already heard of God delivering his people. There comes a moment in Gideon's life, where it's now his turn to live his life of faith with perseverance. And it's the same with us now. Plus, God goes on to say in verse 16, The Lord said to him, I will be with you, and you will destroy the Midianites as if you were fighting against one man. Well, the story continues in verse 17. Gideon replied, if you're truly going to help me, show me a sign to prove that it is really the Lord who is speaking to me. Now, Gideon goes and he gets an offering and comes back to God. Now, you've got to remember, this is a time of great poverty. So for him to give this offering was a, a sign of faith. And I just want to pause and thank all of you that are continuing to give because that's a sign of your faith as well as we give back to God. We're told in verse 20, it says this, The angel of God then said to him, Place the meat and the unleavened bread on this rock and pour the broth over it. Gideon did as he was told. Then the angel of the Lord touched the meat and the bread with the tip of the staff that was in his hand and fire flamed up from the rock and consumed all that Gideon had brought. And the angel of the Lord then disappeared. When Gideon realized that it was the angel of the Lord, he cried out, O sovereign Lord, I'm doomed. I have seen the angel of the Lord face to face. It is all right, the Lord replied. Do not be afraid. You will not die. And Gideon built an altar to the Lord there and named it Yahweh Shalom, which means the Lord is peace. 
The second lesson I would believe that Gideon would want to tell us all about perseverance is this, is that God's peace will persevere when you return to God's presence and his promises. Notice here that none of the circumstances that Gideon is facing, they haven't changed yet. Nothing has changed except Gideon's view of God has changed. And so for Gideon, everything has changed. He now knows that the Lord is peace. Gideon, in this moment, he goes from reciting his weakness to, to worship. He goes from fear to faith. He goes to, from I, I can't do this to I will do it with God's help. Listen, I want to encourage you. Peace is possible for you today before the circumstances ever change. How is it possible? Well, it's possible just like it was with Gideon. Whenever he heard God's promise given to him in God's presence to be with him. You might be wondering, but Tom, if, if God is really with us, then why has all this happened? But that's what Gideon thought too. Perseverance is the capacity to hold up in the face of difficulty. God is telling us today from his word that his name is Yahweh Shalom. The Lord is peace. Will you believe that? God can give you what the news lines can't. God can give you what the stock market can't. God can give you what your job can't. God wants to give you peace and perseverance even in times of crisis. Well, fast forward the story a little bit, and Gideon feels afraid again. So what does he do? Well, he returns, and he goes back to God, and he meets with God, finding again Yahweh Shalom, the fresh peace of God for the fears that he's facing. This time, Gideon says it this way in verse 36. Then Gideon said to God, if you're truly going to use me to rescue Israel as you had promised, prove it to me in this way. I will put a wool fleece on the threshing floor tonight. If the fleece is wet with dew in the morning, but the ground is dry, then I will know that you're going to help me rescue Israel as you had promised. And that's just what happened. When Gideon got up the next morning, he squeezed the fleece and he wrung out a whole bowlful of water. So it wasn't just a little bit of water, a whole bowlful. Just for good measure, Gideon then asked for the sign to be reversed. This time he asked for a wet floor, but for the fleece to be dry. And God graciously gives him that sign as well. Now, just a side note here, we don't want to test God, but in this case, God was gracious to Gideon. Well, fast forward even further in the story, and now it's the night before the big battle with the Midianites. Gideon is again afraid. This is the third time in the story that Gideon has been afraid. And yet each time he's afraid, he takes those fears to God. And each time God reassures him and reminds him that he is Yahweh Shalom, that the Lord is peace. Well, in this example, God meets with him before the battle. This time he gives him the sign that's in the form of a Midianite who shares about a dream that he has with a companion. And the companion that answers in Judges chapter 7, verse 14, his companion answered and said, your dream can only mean one thing. God has given Gideon, son of Joash, the Israelite, victory over Midian and over all of its allies. When Gideon heard the dream and its interpretation, he bowed in worship before the Lord. Then he returned to the Israelite camp and shouted, Get up, for the Lord has given you victory over the Midianite hordes. The Lord is peace, and his peace is available to us each time we come back to him. God's peace is like daily bread. God doesn't give us all of our food, all of, us, all of our bread on day one of our life for our entire life. Instead, he gives it to us daily, bit by bit as we need it. His peace is the same way. He doesn't give us all of God's peace in one moment of time for all of the challenges we will face, but instead, his peace is ready to meet us right where we are in all of the challenges that life might bring our way. That's how God's peace perseveres in our life. For example, in my own life, I've chosen to do now evening devotions, adding them to my normal routine of morning devotions. Why do I do that? Because I want double the times of peace 
to be with Yahweh Shalom, the Lord who is peace, in double of the challenges that we face in this time of crisis. The third lesson I believe that Gideon would give us about perseverance is this, is that God is not overwhelmed by overwhelming odds. Overwhelming odds can make you feel like you want to give up, but God is not overwhelmed. When I ask people today, how are you doing? One of the most common responses I get is that people feel overwhelmed. But notice here in the story with Gideon, God actually stacks the deck against himself. In the story, and you can read all of the story from Judges chapter 6 through Judges chapter 8, he limits Gideon to only 300 warriors to go to war against 135,000 Midianite soldiers. On the night of the battle, we pick up the story in Judges chapter 7, verse 21. It says this, each man stood at his position around the camp. This is the 300 men that Gideon has. They're around the camp and watched as the Midianites rushed around in panic, shouting as they ran to escape. And then when the 300 Israelites blew their ram's horns, they each had a ram's horn, horn, the Lord caused the warriors in the camp, meaning the 135,000 Midianite warriors, to fight against one another with their swords. Let me ask you, why do you think God stacks the deck against himself in this story? I believe it's so that no one would say, well, we did it on our own strength without God. Through the story of Gideon, we can see that God is not worried, God is not panicked, God is not afraid, and God is not overwhelmed. He is Yahweh Shalom, the Lord is peace. Listen, when the enemy has a plan to destroy you, God has a plan to deliver you. When the enemy has a plan to take you out, God has a plan to keep you in. When the enemy has a a plan to tear you down, God has a plan to build you up. When the enemy has a plan to make you afraid, God has a plan to make you brave. When the enemy has a plan to make you worried, the Lord has a plan to make you calm. As Gideon learned, the Lord is peace. But we have a role to play in this. But what is our role? Our role is faith. And what is faith? Well, according to Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, we're told that faith is the confidence that what we hope for will actually happen. And it gives us assurance about things that we do not yet see. Faith is the confidence that the Lord really is peace. That we can hope that he will give us peace right now in the middle of the challenges, just like he did for Gideon in each of the challenges that he faced. God's word says that the righteous will live by faith. You know something? It is easy to claim that you are a person of courage when none is needed. It is easy to claim that you're a person of faith when no faith is called for. It's easy to claim that you're a person of perseverance when no perseverance is needed because all of the circumstances in your life are great. But God wants to give you his peace, his courage, his strength, and his presence, just like he did for Gideon. And like Gideon, God not only wants to give that to you, but he wants you to be someone that elevates and uses that to help others overcome their fears as they turn to God. You know, there's a number of people that might fit into different categories. Some of you might be thinking, well, Tom, I feel like I've got great faith right now. I'm not afraid. I don't even really get why other people are afraid. And listen, for those of you who have great faith right now, I want to say that is awesome. And God has given you that faith for such a time as this. But listen, if God has given you great calm and great faith right now, What matters is not just that you have great faith. What matters is what you're doing with your great faith. Years ago, there was a speaker named Gary Haugen who told a story about going to the gym when he was younger. And he said this, he says, I worked out in the gym. I would look over to a special section and I would see in that special section of the gym, the bodybuilders. 
And, and they were working out and they were posing in the mirror and I would see all of this muscle mass. And so one day I walked over to them and I asked them, I said, what's all the muscle for? And one of the guys said, well, it's mainly just for us to pose and, and show off in the mirror. I want to tell you, if you're one of my friends with great faith, we need you. Your gift of great faith is not just so that you can tell others that you have it. It's not just so that you can flex and pose in a mirror. It's so that you can use it to encourage those who have little faith. What are you doing with your great faith to help others now? Pray for the sick. Text or encourage those who might need to be encouraged. Give generously. Maybe share your food if you have extra food with those in need. Elevate your community, your family, your coworkers. Elevate the atmosphere when you go to the grocery store or your online community. Maybe others of you, you would say, well, I don't have great faith. Maybe you just say, well, Tom, look, that's not me. I have little faith. I I'm the weakest of faith. And I want to encourage you, yeah, that's what Gideon said too. But God greeted him with this greeting, greeting mighty warrior. That's how God is. God is the God who calls things into existence that do not yet exist. And that's not my word, that's God's word from Romans 4, 7. Will you let God grow your faith? Hear me, if you're a person of little faith, you're no less a child of God than the person with great faith. But don't be content with little faith. He knows the end of your story from the very beginning. Greeting, mighty warrior, he says. What God calls you, is of greater consequence than what you call yourself. You might be hiding in your wine press now, but you may be a mighty warrior in the making if you will just believe God and tap into his peace, just like Gideon did. God can use you if you will trust him to be part of his plan to help people in these times. Maybe others of you would say, well, Tom, I don't have great faith. I don't have even weak faith. I have no faith. I don't even believe in God. And my message for you would be, well, you can start right now. Remember in Gideon's story that people had turned their back on God and, and some maybe even never knew God. But now in the midst of this crisis, when everything was being shaken around them, they turned to God again and they cried out to God. Everything that they trusted was shaken. And so it highlighted that God alone is the one who is not shaken. Now listen, when they did that, God responded. It's not just that they turned in a crisis time to God. It's that the crisis highlighted what has been true all along. You might say that you don't have faith, but the reality is you probably have put your hope in something. Maybe you've put your hope in your job or your stocks, maybe in your health or your age. Listen, all of those are going to fail in the final assessment of life. God has created you for a relationship with him. But the Bible says that we've all fallen short of the glory of God. And because of that, the wages of sin is death. But the good news is that the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. While we were still sinners, God's word tells us, Jesus Christ died for us. So that now, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. The Bible says that it's with our heart that we believe and are made righteous, and it is with our mouth that we confess and are saved. My friend, if you've never had faith, you can begin right now by giving your life to Jesus Christ. You will find when you do that, just like Gideon did, that the Lord is peace. And to all of you who are followers of Jesus, may I remind you of Jesus' words from John 14, verse 27. He says, I'm leaving you with a gift, peace, peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give is a gift that the world cannot give. So do not be troubled or be afraid. Let's pray. If you want to commit your life to Christ, you can just do that now. You can say, God, right now, I am believing in my heart and I am confessing with my mouth that Jesus alone is Lord and Savior. And I call out to him 
and I ask you to save me. Be my hope. Be my Lord. Forgive me of my sin and return me to a right relationship with you. Teach me how to know you and how to follow you and give me your peace in this time. If you prayed that prayer, I want to encourage you to get a copy of the Bible. Begin reading in the book of Mark to learn more about Jesus and let us know that. Let's continue praying. For those of us with little faith, I pray for you now. God is speaking to you, mighty warrior. May you no longer focus on your weakness, but may you focus on the Lord who is with you, the Lord who is peace. And for those who have great faith, may God help you use your great faith to awaken and strengthen faith in others. Lord, I pray now for all of us that you would help us grow in our faith to trust that you are our peace and to find your peace, even in the midst of the crisis, and believing that your peace is available to us today by faith as we come to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's sing together. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head I will sing of the goodness of God All my life And all my life you have been faithful All my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able And I will sing of the goodness of God Let's sing the next verse I love your voice You have led me through the fire In darkest night You are close like no other I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend For I have lived in the goodness of God
pray. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope this week. In Jesus' name we said, amen. Well, thanks for joining us in this online service. Uh, I have loved watching all of the activity online as we have encouraged one another. I could not be more proud of our church family. I want to remind you uh, that you can tune in to Daily Touch Points every morning during the week, as well as Tom's midweek Bible study that'll take place on Wednesday night online. Other than that, we will see you next weekend when we're back together. God bless you.